Hey YouTube, welcome to another GIMP Know How tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'll be rounding out my photo manipulation series, teaching you how to make this. Uh, now this is a photo manipulation I did. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool, so I'll be teaching you how to do that. And uh, we're going to need quite a few stocks, and I'll have the links in the description. Okay, so first we need to open up our cup hand stock. So we're going to go File Open and go to your desktop, find the cupped hands. And like in almost all of our photo manipulation tutorials, we're going to need to cut these out. So go ahead and do that with the paths tool. So if you haven't joined me on any of our previous ones, we're just going to make a selection around the path, uh, around the hand using the paths tool just like this. Once you have your cutout with the paths tool, it should look something like this. All we need to do is press enter to convert it into a selection and then we can uh, click select feather and we're going to feather it by five pixels uh, then on your layer doll dialog right click on uh, your layer click add an alpha channel and then click edit cut select none see our result that gives us a very clean looking cut of the hand it was pretty nice cut uh, i'm going to make a layer underneath the hands and put this layer on white yeah, it was a pretty clean cut, uh, except we have a few specks of black in there, but we can touch those up with the eraser tool. Once you've touched up your hands sufficiently with the eraser tool, uh, the next step is to import your forest photograph. Uh, so I'm going to go File, Open as Layers, and uh, Main Forest is what I saved it as. Uh, now, a handy trick you need to know is tone the opacity of the forest down just a little bit so you can see the hands under it so we can line it up correctly. Uh, so we're going to right click on this, add an alpha channel, and then um, kind of line it up so we have no blank spots. Right about here looks good. And then uh, we need to take the eraser tool and take a pretty big fuzzy eraser tool, maybe scale that up. Not quite that big. And uh, go ahead and erase the sky. Wow, that sounds epic. But anyway, go ahead and erase the sky. And uh, the effect I'm going to go for is to... Maybe turn the opacity down. Uh, the effect I'm going to go for is to make it look like the forest is growing on the inside of his hand. So I'm going to try to erase out here really rough, and then I'll go down and refine it. Alright, what do we have so far? Not bad so far at all. Not bad. Okay, then you need to go in, zoom in a little bit. Turn down the opacity so you can see the finger. Take your eraser tool, make it a hard eraser tool. And make it less big. And erase pretty carefully around where the fingers are. Oops, too, went too far in there. You should note that on some parts you actually will need a fuzzy brush. Like right here. Gonna go ahead and erase some more there. Maybe a little more here. Overall, I think we have a pretty decent cut of the forest. It looks like it's in his hands. Kind of, but it does, it does. Uh, so, now that we have the forest cut out to our exact specifications, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up the castle image. This castle is actually called Neuschweinstein. It's in Germany. I have a mural of it on my room. In my room. Uh, check the chain. We need to scale this quite a bit. I'm going to go percent. Scale it. Oh. 40%. See how that... That'll work. Uh, it's maybe even a little bit too much, but it's okay. Take the flip tool, flip it horizontally. Move it right about over here, halfway down, and proceed to render the castle. Once you have your castle cut out just like this, I just did it like the hands, feathered it. I didn't touch this one up with the eraser because it doesn't matter that much. Uh, I'm going to click on my castle layer, then go filters, enhance, sharpen. I'm going to sharpen this by about 45 or so pixels. 
This gives it a much sharper effect, as the name sharp Sharpen would suggest. And I'm going to move it up on the hand just a little bit. I made the image bigger, by the way, by going to Image, Canvas Size. Uh, so on the new Schweinstein layer, you'll notice that it doesn't quite blend with this forest picture. That can be pretty easily fixed. We're just going to go Colors, Hue, Saturation. Where is that? There it is. And tone the saturation up. Oh, around 50. Now it still doesn't fit, and we're gonna go new Schweinstein, go colors, hue, saturation, again, tone the saturation up, because we want this to be a very surreal image effect. And if it doesn't fit by now, we can take the clone tool, uh, select a fuzzy selection of the trees, like down here, and go up a layer on new Schweinstein, take the clone tool, and kind of clone up on the trees so it flows pretty naturally. Pretty easy effect to do. Uh, now, we're done with the clone tool, and new Schweinstein fits pretty good. The saturation has been increased. Uh, we're going to take the new Schweinstein layer, duplicate it. On the bottom layer, right-click the layer, click Alpha to Selection, select black as your foreground color, take your Fill tool, click Fill whole selection, and fill in that uh, layer then click select none. This gives us a black border around it, we don't really even want that. We're just going to take the perspective tool, and we're doing this to make a shadow, by the way, if you hadn't figured that out yet. And we're going to kind of drag the castle in a type of shadow shape thing. Oh, and there is a little bit we didn't erase. I'll need to get that. Anyway, once you have your shadow type thing, we're just going to set this layer mode on Overlay. Maybe duplicate it once. Nope, that's too strong. Overlay, that's a fine shadow. Uh, now I think the next thing we're going to do is incorporate the rock. So go File, Open as Layer, and uh, where is that rock? Here it is. Now this is a fairly unimportant part of the picture, and you could probably skip it if you wanted to. Uh, right click, add an alpha channel, scale this rock down quite a bit, Probably about like that. Move it over. I'm just going to sit this rock right around here. It's pretty unimportant, yet it just adds a bit another element of realism here. Cut the rock out. Once you've cut the rock out, and this was fairly easy considering um, all I had to use was the fuzzy eraser tool, uh, take the fuzzy eraser tool on a considerably lesser, like, um, I'm using the biggest size on 0.16 scale, and just kind of erase where you think the trees would be to blend the rock in, because a rock floating on top of trees doesn't look all too terribly natural, I'm afraid to say. So just erase kind of in the shape of trees, kind of pointy, erase the bottoms, and as you can see the rock already looks like it's covered up by trees. View, zoom, 100%. And it looks like the rock is covered. It's just a big rock sticking out of the um, middle of nowhere. Well, middle of trees. Uh, now, this is not really an important step of the process, like I mentioned before, but it adds another element of realism. Uh, now, the next thing we need to do is add a waterfall coming out of the palm. And for this, we can erase most of this forest, I think. I, I was too... Yeah, we can, we can go ahead and erase some of that. Not all of it, just some. Okay. Alright. Uh, so let's open up our waterfall stock. File, open as layers. And the first waterfall stock we're using is um, waterfall1.jpg. It's quite large. We can scale that down. Let's move it up. And again, do the opacity trick. And this one's going to be fairly easy to cut out as well. We can just use the fuzzy eraser tool. Pretty big one. Remember, don't cut too close to the waterfall. Okay. Turn this up to 100% opacity. See if there's anything we didn't get. I don't think there is. We're going to move this behind the forest layer so we get a kind of unique coverage effect. And, um... I think that actually looks good for now. 
Uh, let's maybe move it over here a little bit. And on the forest layer, I'm going to clone the trees a little bit so they look... Because uh, right now it's falling into trees that are supposed to be way in the background. And we're coming off with a little bit of a scaling issue here. So I'm going to go ahead and clone... I'm going to clone, I'm going to be ambitious and pretty much clone away a whole entire selection of the image. Now you don't, don't want to get too many identical looking patches, but I think I did a fairly reasonably good job of cloning out the forest and making it look like the waterfall was tumbling into the forest. On the waterfall, also increase the saturation. And maybe on the rock, increase the saturation too. Forgot to do that. Okay, now uh, the last thing we need to do is have a waterfall coming over this finger right here. Whoops, there's a section of the forest I didn't erase. You'll often find that when you use the eraser tool. Just go ahead and fix it, act like nothing happened. Uh, so we're going to open up our final waterfall image. It's a nice one coming off of a cliff. And scale it down again quite a bit. That's about good. And we want it to seem like it's kind of coming out of the forest down over the finger. Okay, take your eraser tool and get rid of it. Uh, be a bit more careful around the water's edge. We don't actually want that blurry. Do a straight line, hold shift, straight line up the waterfall, then erase the rest. Other than that, looks pretty good so far. And it's kind of white, so we're going to go colors, hue, saturation. Saturation all the way up, and looks pretty good. I'm gonna alpha to selection. Whoops, alpha to selection. This make a new layer, fill it in with a nice aqua color, and set that layer to overlay. Turn the opacity down a little bit, and erase parts of the aqua overlay that you don't want there. We only want it on the waterfall. Once you have it on the waterfall, our waterfall is done. Uh, go ahead and merge that overlay layer down. Then we're going to duplicate the waterfall layer, make this black, and add a shadow running down the finger. Oops. And then we're going to uh, set the layer mode to overlay. And you go filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And that looks fine as of now. Maybe tone the opacity down a little bit. That's what we forgot to do with the castle layer. So on the castle shadow, we're going to blur that. Thought something was wrong there. That looks much better. And uh, this waterfall doesn't really look uh, very good, but that's okay. Because on the background layer, we're going to take this kind of navy color and select the gradient FG to transparent. Kind of stroke up like this and down like this. Or you could have used um, bilinear. And go view, zoom, and fit image to window. Now we're going to take our cloud brushes, white, and... Uh, Find your cloud brushes, make a layer above everything else, 
and make some clouds. Keep on clicking those, dang it. And we want most of the clouds to be gathered at the bottom, but uh, we're going to zoom in into the little mini world that we have here. And um, we're going to make some mini clouds. That sounds fun. So go ahead and brush in some mini clouds. Whoops, wrong brush. And you can use them to actually disguise your defects if you want. They're a clever little tool. Think of view zoom and uh, zoom in, fit in image in window. And uh, that is our image right there. Uh, t uh, brush away any imperfections you have. And I believe I forgot to show you the finished product. This is it. Um, this is not the same as the tutorial. This is the original one I did that I later based the tutorial off of. But, um, yes, anyway, this is what you should have gotten, or something like this. And, uh, again, uh, this has been a Gimp Noha tutorial. Thanks for watching.